Welcome to today's tutorial from the Twin Safety Department. Today we have a very exciting topic. We are talking about the realization of a safe break test with the AX8000. My name is Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. As always, after some basic information and a description of our demo system, I will explain the approach for the SBT for the safe break test. And after the live demonstration, I will give you some additional information, a short outlook to the future tutorials, and we close our session with a short Q&A concerning the SPT functionality. The goal of the tutorial today is to extend an existing TwinSafe Motion Wizard project with a SPT functionality. As prerequisites, as always, you need a Twinker 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11, a TE9000 version greater or equal to 1211, a TwinSafe firmware on the AX8000 greater or equal to 03, an AX8000 firmware greater or equal to 0104 with a default module ID active, and you need a motor with integrated holding brake. The start of our tutorial today is a Twinker 3 solution with a standard PLC, a EL6910 project and an AX8000 project. Our demo system consists of a CX for the Ethercat communication and a standard PLC. We have a EL6910 master TwinSafe logic. We have a EL1918 with a connected light barrier. We have an AX8000 in the X2XX safe motion version and we have a motor with integrated holding brake. As required safety functionality today, we want to execute a safe brake test on the AX8000 after a trigger from the standard PLC via the EL6910. The SBT functionality itself uh, consists of a direct cooperation between the standard PLC and the safety part. And as you can see in the diagram, the main part is within the standard PLC. The following steps are needed in the standard PLC. First, you drive the axis to a test position. When the test position is reached, the brake is locked. Then the torque for the test is built up. After that, the SBT functionality on the twin safe part is triggered. And within the twin safe part, basically you only have a function block SBT which handles the safe break test on the twin safe side. And after that, of course, there's a feedback to the standard PLC and the standard PLC has to uh, evaluate the feedback system. Within the twin safe, you have only the function block SPT, which I will describe now. The complete SPT functionality within the twin safe side is handled by the function block SPT which has several inputs and outputs for controlling the SPT runs. The first input is the SPT input, which is the request of an SPT run from, for example, the EO6910 or a standard PLC. We have a SPC in signal, which is the information if the break is closed. We have a single turn position input, which is the safe position from the encoder. We have an actual current IQ which is the torque building current from the AX8000. And we have a min current IQ, which is the minimum required torque for the SPT run. For the minimum current, we have two possibilities. We have a dynamic possibility via the input, and we can also enter a static limit via the parameter port. And the main task of the SPT function block is if an SPT run is requested and the brake is closed, the actual current and the single term position are monitored. And if the minimum uh, torque is available and the position doesn't change, the SPT run is successful. If not, you get an error for the brake valid signal. So you have three outputs for the SPT. First, you have a test error, which shows you if an error occurred during the SPT run. You have a break valid output, which gives you the test result. And you have a remaining time output, 
where you can handle the remaining time within the standard PLC until, until the next SPT is required. And the functionality of the SPT function block can be further configured via the function block parameters. We have a break test interval parameter, which gives the maximum time between two runs. So, for example, if you want one test uh, per eight hours, you can configure that. And after that, the break valid signals goes to zero and you have to execute a new safe break test. The maximum duration is the maximum allowed time for an SPT run. So if neither the current, so the torque or the position is not available, after that duration, the SPT gives an error. We have a maximum position deviation because the analog value of the position usually uh, chitters a little bit. So you have a allowed window for the position signal and you have a min duration. So the minimum torque for the SPT has to be available for that configured minimum time. And then it's already time for our live demonstration. We have our Twinkle 3 solution with our AX8000 safety project. And we have prepared a standard PLC project where we have a, a state machine which closes the brakes, starts the motor, builds the torque and uh, calls the safety function within the EOS 6910, which is then transferred to the AX8000 command for the SPT and uh, the standard PLC code also evaluates the feedback. But I won't go into detail of the standard PLC code, just showing the size of the code, because today we are focusing on uh, the twin safe part, of course. For the SPT, we need our function block SPT. And during the SPT, we also want to limit the maximum torque. So we need an additional limit function block. We want to output the SPT state. So we need an all function block. And as mentioned before, we want to uh, limit the maximum torque during the SPT. <coughs> The SPT function block has a minimum current IQ of 900 in our example. We are also renaming the limit function blocks according to our scheme. So that's the SPT IQ limit function block. For the output of the SPT command, we want to invert, invert the signal. So we call the OR function block the SPT invert state for channel A. And the information of the SPT command and the limit output is combined with the OR function block SPT maximum IQ. Now. So. Our limit function block, in our case, it's a limit from minus 1,500 to plus 1,500. And we connect all the inputs already mentioned. So the SPT input is our SPT uh, command from FSOE. SPC in signal is our local SPC command from the AX8000. The single term position is our primary feedback uh, position signal from the local process image. Our actual current IQ is also from the local process image, the current IQ. We all connected it to variables, of course, but basically it's the same information for you. And the limit function block, we have to change the data type of the input to a double integer. And we connect it also to current IQ. So the next step for the inversion of the state, 
we take our SPT command and we invert it for the output state. We give that signal to our um, SPT state for the outside world, SPT state. And we are combining that information also with our limit results. So as long as SPT runs and the, <coughs> and the torque is in limit, everything's fine. We connect the outputs of the SPT function block test error to test error, the break valid signal to be further evaluated. And we also output our remaining time so that within the standard PLC, we can handle that time information to get uh, the break test running in time. And if the maximum torque is not valid anymore. We want to uh, realize the SS1 functionality, so we connect the output to the TwinSafe group channel A STO SS1 error handling to input MON in fear. So if the limit is not valid or the torque is not within the limits, we want to call SS1 STO. And last but not least, we allow a maximum position deviation of three for the function block. So that was basically all. We just have to download our safety project. So we start the multi-download, choose our two projects, enter the username and the password. and verify the two serial numbers. And start the download. After this download has finished, we verify the CRCs and activate our TwinSafe project. That was all for the TwinSafe part of the SPT. Now we want to test our functionality. So we prepare our Twinker 3 to get a better view. We open up our standard PLC code and move it side by side to the safety application so that we can also see the online view of the TwinSafe logic. So we activate the online view. And from the context menu, show online values to get the analog value view. And of course, we clear our error list to see if anything new appears within the SPT. So now it's already time to start our test run for the break test. As you can see on the right hand side, we have a Boolean value B trigger break test. And if we trigger that variable, we see on the left that the application, the SPT command comes, the torque reaches the limit 900. And after one second, the break valid output goes to true and the remaining, remaining time starts to decrease. So that within the standard PLC, we can have a look when the next break test is due. And basically, that was our first successful safe break test. That was all from our live demonstration. So now it's time for a few further information. Currently, we are writing a detailed application example for our application handbook. And the complete example is also discussed with the TIFF suite. So after the example is done, you have one application of the safe break test which was approved by the TÜV suit with the calculation of the uh, safety values. The complete example is according to DIN EN ISO 16091 in Appendix G and DTUV 005 article. Within both documents, you find all the information you need for vertical access. 
So you find the information when a break test should be executed, which architecture you should build for which um, applications, how often the safe break test has to be done, how much torque you need for the safe break test, and so on and so on. The application will also have the safety technology examination. So we show you how you can evaluate your system. And last but not least, you will have all detailed additional requirements. So for example, the manual of the drive and the manual of the motor has always be regarded because with those manuals and our application information, you have all the requirements for an adequate test position, for example, what you have to do concerning servicing the motor and the other components. You need the information if a refreshment of the brake is needed, for example, and so on and so on. If you need any help with the realization of the safe brake test, uh, you can always contact us, of course. On the first hand, there's always our example in the application handbook we will hopefully release soon. Uh, you saw that we went quickly over our standard PLC code. And the fact is that that standard PLC is very dependable on your application. We have a very easy state machine for our test today, but there are a lot of special cases within the standard PLC. For example, if you have coupled axes, you have to decouple them, uh, them first and we will do one, two or three examples within our application handbook, how it can handle it within the standard PLC code. But uh, if you have any questions or you need help with that code, you can always contact our drive support. And of course, if you have questions concerning the usage of SPT within TwinSafe or the complete cooperation between standard PLC and TwinSafe, you can also contact our safety support. Last further information, the de determination of the minimum torque. If you want to determine the minimum torque needed for the safety part for the SPT function block, you first determine the minimum torque for the SPT within the functional control. And as soon as you have that information, you can calculate the safety torque because the torque safety is calculated by multiplying the functional torque with uh, the square root of two to get your torque limit value for the twin safe part. For the future tutorials, the topic for the next tutorial is now fixed based on, well, emails we received. Um, next week we will do a tutorial on SLP, safe limited position with automatic referencing. Thank you a lot for your attention. I hope we will hear again next week for the SLP with automatic referencing.